greetings to all present here and i will present the budget for external ministry and for the financial year 23 the ministry will be focusing on increasing india's engagement in world deliberations over crucial matters such as afghanistan another focus of ministry will be delivering the best possible aid to indian residents living abroad financially and otherwise the ministry will also increase its aid for various underdeveloped countries to help them cope with pandemic and its after effects for this will strengthen india's position abroad and add to its candidature for a permanent membership in unsc under the present regime india has clearly demonstrated its will to play a leading role in global arena and can be counted as a pole in its own right continued stability and prosperity at home and political consequences on broad foreign policy parameters will help india reach this goal to conclude in this phase of geopolitical transformation india needs to follow an approach of working with multiple partners on different agendas therefore sabka saath sabka vikas sabka vishwas is relevant in foreign policy and to ensure this we plan to emerge a helping hand for those in need i think that's what a global leader does someone as said right uh, start acting like a leader and you will be one some day ultimately that should guide india is quest to make itself a great power with a difference namely in a way which enables to achieve mahatma gandhi's dream of wiping tears from every indian only then it uh, would it be in keeping uh, with india's core values and national interest it is indeed the right objective for a great country like india so i propose 19500.62 crore rupees for grant number 28 of which 17750.27 crore rupees is revenue and 1750.35 crore rupees is for capital use thank you and now i request the pali minister of tourism and external affairs uh, to carry forward thank you moksh a uh, greeting to the house honorable speaker before the outbreak of the covid-19 pandemic tourism was one of the most important sectors in the world economy contributing to nearly 10% of global gdp and to around 320 million people worldwide however the pandemic resulted in the closure of international boundaries imposition of severe travel travel restrictions and quarantines which devastated the tourism sector according to the united nations world tourism organization international tourist arrivals reduced by 74% in 2020 reaching the lowest levels in more than 3 decades further the united nations conference on trade and development estimated a loss of 4 trillion us dollars to global gdp because of the losses incurred in the tourism sector however concerted efforts are being made to get back on track the ministry of tourism maintains the incredible india campaign focused on promoting tourism in india i am pleased to share that the travel and tourism competitiveness report ranked india 35th out of 140 countries india improved its ranking by six places over the last year's report which is among the top 25% of countries the report ranks the price competitiveness of india's tourism sector 13th out of 140 and we are determined to improve however some other aspects of our tourism infrastructure remain somewhat underdeveloped so the ministry of tourism presents to you brahman which is indeed worthy of your time it is an integrated program by the ministry 
replacing the current Swadesh Darshan scheme, aimed at developing the tourism sector and increasing revenue, in addition to generating skill-based employment opportunities for people across various departments. Brahman will be a program we start for tourists that allows them a complete tour of the nation, epitomizing our rich cultural heritage. Travel will be arranged by specially designed buses showcasing the traditions of respective states, and tourists will be staying at exclusively designed hotels providing typical traditional facilities. The ministry will keep occasional cultural programs during festive and holiday seasons to give the program a hook and a boost. Also, we will collaborate with the private sectors for hotels and buses in order to work towards developing an ease of doing business and attracting investment in the genius and international. And for this program, I propose rupees 2000 crores in the budget. Honorable Speaker, the world is facing a serious challenge. In these trying times, when many economies are struggling to revive, our people and our industry have exhibited remarkable resilience. Post-pandemic, a new world order seems to be emerging. One in which Asia is poised to occupy a prominent position and India will have a leading role therein. In this scenario, as our Honorable Prime Minister says, opportunity in adversity is to be taken. With this being said, Brahman is a step in the right direction. Further, as our Honorable Finance Minister mentioned in her last budget speech, Indian Railways have prepared a national rail plan for India. The objective is to create a future-ready railway system by 2030. Once this program develops a rigid service-ready base, travel under Brahman will also be possible through one of the largest rail networks in the world. Alongside, as for the last union budget, we will introduce the aesthetically designed Vista Dome LHP coach on tourist routes to give a better travel experience to passengers. Besides, I would like to put this on record that the Prashad scheme of the ministry is serving the world more than satisfactorily, and we also have plans of incorporating it in Brahman in the coming budgets. Hence, I propose rupees. 4,066.52 crores for the ministry, grant number 98, of which 2,066.52 crores is for revenue and 2,000 crores exclusively for Brahman. Honorable Speaker, besides and before increasing revenue, providing quality services to the world has been, is, and will always be the utmost priority of the ministry. For we in India firmly believe in Atithi Devo Bhava. Thank you.